Welcome to Young Voices for Christ, a podcast brought to you by a passionate group of young adults from Crofton Park Baptist Church here in South London and Brooklyn. Here they come together to share their faith, explore life's big questions and celebrate the journey of following Christ. Join them as they delve into inspiring stories, engaging discussions and heartfelt reflections, all aimed at encouraging and uplifting your walk with God. Whether you're seeking spiritual growth, community, or just a dose of inspiration, Young Voices for Christ is here to light your path. Hi, Clement here. I decided to get involved in the conversation myself in this first part of a two-part episode. I've made it two parts because we spoke for 30 minutes and that's long enough for anyone to kind of keep their attention going. So listen and enjoy the first part of me, Gate Crashing, the Young Voices for Christ podcast, or as I'd like to think of it, them inviting me along for a conversation. You didn't see the air quotes. Are we rolling? <laughs> yeah, we're rolling. So, um... Yo, rolling. <laughs> yeah, welcome, me, to your Young Voices of Christ podcast. Um, I, I just wanted to come in and just have a conversation with you guys about... I thought we were supposed to be young. Yeah, you are young. Huh? Please say why you here. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just visiting. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just here to. I'm here to kind of eavesdrop oh, and maybe kind you. of lead a sort of like a conversation, I guess. Um, you know, I'm, um, I've listened to your interviews. I've listened to you know, faith, how you came to faith, and everything like that. Um, and I can understand what it's like to be a young person who you're born into a religion you're born into a faith I don't like to use religion um, I prefer faith and you just do it anyway because that's the way it's always been you don't question mm-hmm. it and then you do question it um, I know you asked uh, Chris um, that question you know do you, did you ever question did you have a time when you questioned your faith yeah so I guess that's going to be my question to all of you really I mean I question my faith sometimes because uh, it's difficult and then I kind of give myself a mental slap you know like, psh, psh, yeah. how dare you because faith is believing in things you don't see yeah believing in the you, invisible believing in the invisible which mm. is a really difficult thing to do well we believe in gravity we do and it's invisible but we can see and the wind. physical manifestation of gravity we see apples drop but don't we you can see, see the it? physical yeah, of, of, of God you do yeah. but the problem is you get science trying to convince you that actually you know it's not God Mm. Um, and that's yeah so I can only go f- so far though yeah, but the thing about science is when you can't explain it then you don't explain it you don't say oh it's God then you just yeah. say oh there's no evidence yeah and they just leave it at that so being a Christian I think sometimes can be personal because mm. it's really down to you so everyone's saying you know uh, I think I don't know if you remember this uh, verse in the Bible um, when Jesus healed this man's withered hand or something like that and they were like, how did that happen? So I don't know. All I knew this before, I was like this, and now I'm not. Mm. I don't know. I don't need to know the science behind it. Mm. So um, I'm just going to ask you guys, you know, when, when have you come across those little doubts about, you know, is God really here? And anyone can answer. It's, all, it's open. It's open. And, um, you know, how do you deal with it? Um, I think... At some point, everyone questions their faith eventually um, because you get so many people try to, like, I don't know, push their ideas onto you. So, like, when I was studying religious studies, um, we'd have debates about big topics, so why we think God is real. And then you hear other people's arguments and you hear their points and you hear how they Mm. might criticise you. And then you think, and then you end up thinking, like, but maybe they're right. Or if I've been asking for this and I need it, but it hasn't happened, or something that could actually benefit me. And I'm not thinking of like materialistic things, like, I need an iPhone and it hasn't happened. (laughs) I mean, like, things that I might actually need and it hasn't happened. But then when you get older or you come to a realization that, 
maybe I didn't actually need it or it's all in God's timing mm. and maybe God has a different plan for you and it might that just might not be in his plan. So I think it's, as you said, like faith is something you can't see. So just having faith and seeing the things that God has done because obviously we have the Bible. The Bible is evidence already that God is real and yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyone else want to? Can you repeat it, please? Sorry. No, it's really just, yeah, it's just um, everybody having doubts sometimes about whether God is real or even doubts. Okay. Maybe sometimes it makes you doubt your faith because Mm. something's happened. You're like, how could God let that happen? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I used to have a lot of doubts. Because it's like that little spirit of doubt that lingers in your ear. And it's like, what if this? What if that? Or something bad happens. So then all of a sudden, the earth's crumbling. Um, but I can definitely say that the more closer you get to God and the more reassurance that he gives you, it's like there's no such thing as doubt. It just depends on your relationship with God. That's how I see it. Because it's how you face when negativity comes. So... When something bad happens, that's when it's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to, how I see it is, are you just going to sit and cry about it? Or are you going to sit and cry about it to God? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. where, it depends where your relationship is, where, where you stand. Of course, doubt will always try to get in, but then that's what you say, like, say it and get the behind, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what are you willing to do? Like, what are you willing to stand for? Like, I always get told, like, if you don't stand for something, you fall for everything. Yeah. So I think it's just that little, that little mingling spirit of doubt that's like, oh, this, that, this, that, this, that. It's just like, you need to be like Satan, get thee behind and keep pressing forward, keep moving on, keep, you get pressing, fighting the good fight. So that, that's what I see. Yeah. Because um, sometimes if you, if you think about it in a different way as well, you know, the thing about doubt is sometimes you get doubts because like you say, people tell you stuff, the more mm. they say it, the more um, it starts to become your truth if you're not mm. careful. Yeah. So not even just about faith as well. It might even be about, we talked about self-image earlier on or self, could be self-worth. Mm. The more people tell you like, oh, you're not worth anything, you're never going to amount to anything, or you can't do that, that thing's way too big for you, it's out of your um, grasp, you start thinking that way, then it can become your truth and that's where some doubts can creep in. Mm. Chris, what do you think? Well, for me, I still view myself as a child, so I'm still absorbing stuff. But as I've grown older, my parents have tried to give me kind of room to question. But I don't think it's really necessary because I haven't questioned yet or if I question. Mm. So it's kind of like that, that, giving me room to question, but I don't need the room to yeah. question. Mm. I think your mom's going to be really reassured hearing those words. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, maybe because sometimes as parents we kind of, um, I think it's us kind of taking a step back as well because we never had this opportunity to have this kind of conversation with our parents. Mm. And my dad didn't even go to church um, from when I knew him anyway. Because mm. we came from a Catholic family and my grandfather was one of the first people to embrace Christianity in the town to the point that he gave away some family land so they could build the church on the land. So the St. Matthew's Church in Undo is actually built on uh, family land. He donated mm-hmm. it so all of his children are going to go to church. Um, and so for them, it was like, you didn't question it. It was just like, you just did what you're told. So even my dad that didn't go to church would tell us, we have to go to church. Mm. And I think he might have questioned his faith when, because uh, think bad things happen, people start to use to, to question their faith. And sometimes it might be what your faith is rooted in. Mm. So if your faith is rooted in, as long as good things happen to me, and God protects me from bad things, then it's all good. Mm. But the moment something bad happens, it's like, oh, pff, yeah. why, was I even, why was I even invested in God mm. in the first like, place? Like, where's God? Yeah, where's God? Mm. How, can he, how can he let this happen to me if he says he loves me so much? Mm. So, and I think that's probably where you start to get people doubt their faith or fail in their faith or whatever. So for my dad, I think it's probably when his marriage didn't work out with my mom yeah. and they split up. So for some weird reason, he still felt that, you know, it's still important for my kids to go to church. So we went to church, we did what we were told. And I started questioning, I actually started questioning, my cousin started questioning. Um, and we didn't understand the Catholic faith at all. We didn't, because half of it was in Latin, we didn't speak Latin. 
Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, we had this Irish priest come over and they'd be doing half the mass in Latin and uh, they tell us, now you have to genuflect, you have to go down on your knee, you have to stand up, you have to do the sign of the cross, you have to say 10 Hail Marys. Oh, gosh. And we'd read the Bible and we wouldn't understand, why are we praying to Mary? I think I was mm. watching my cousin asked, why are we praying to Mary? Uh, I thought it was only God that answers prayers. And you have to pray to all these saints, saints, whatever, of whatever, pray for us, saint, whatever, whatever, pray for us. And you read in the Bible, the only way to God is through Jesus. So it's all very confusing. Yeah. So I think for me, there was actually one time, actually, Islam seemed to be more attractive to me because they felt more disciplined. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this guy's pretty much Wow. Yeah, this guy's, this guy's, this guy's are really serious. They pray five times a day. They know yeah. what yeah. Like, you yeah. know, we go to church what we feel like. Yeah. And we hang at the back mm. of the, the teenagers will hang at the back of the church and crack jokes and stuff. And, <laughs> and, and all that kind of stuff. So we didn't feel, it didn't feel serious. Mm. Yes, as guys as well, it's when, you, when you're growing up, you want structure. You want some sort of discipline. Yeah. Mm. It might be behind what we see with the gangs phenomenon and stuff like that. You want someone to give you purpose, to give you direction. Mm. And if you're not getting that in your church, if you're not getting that from your family, you're going to get it somewhere else mm. you, because that's what you're looking for. And then for. that's what messes you up. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, wow. I've questioned that. I've yeah. That. I think the Islam thing, it kind of, that's kind of reminded me because... Obviously, in my mom's family, she a lot of her siblings are Muslim. And when I went to Uganda on holiday, we'd go with them to um, the mosque on Fridays. And you just see how, as you said, disciplined they are. But I think it that can happen with any religion, now mm-hmm. I look at it. Yeah. Because there are also some very devout Christians as well. Like, they veil like veil, Christian veiling and they pray every single day they're very religious um, and they're very intent on what they do but that there can also be the opposite in both religions so um, Muslims that might not pray every single day mm. or might not go to the mosque but say they're a Muslim and same with Christians they might never go to church but say they believe in God mm. and still call themselves a Christian. So I think, really, it depends. Um, But at the same time, Christianity is basically your religion with your faith in Jesus Christ and reading the word so you can be closer to him and know him more. And I think that really depends whether you're in church or outside of church. I feel like there are people that might go to church and their relationship with God might be less stronger than someone that doesn't go to church, but they pray every day, they read the Bible. And yeah. yeah, I'm glad you mm. said that thing about reading the Bible and the Word because that's the difference. Because when you're young, a lot of, you know, when you're a toddler, you just absorb things like a sponge. Mm. People keep going mum, 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 mum to you because when you say mama first, we see papa. Then you, you end up absorbing that and spitting it back out. Yeah. And then you get older, you get to your teens, and you start to question some things, but then you start to... Invite in, some things. Invite some things, yeah. and you start to get transformed by the environment around mm. you. I mean, we listen to that Mark, John Mark Homer podcast that talks about you are influenced by your environment, by yeah. the stories you hear and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you then become that person. But at the end of the day, you're still looking at stuff Mm-hmm. But when you read the word, you start to discover stuff for yourself. So for me then, being young, really seeing someone, I have to get to the mosque, I've got to pray, felt like discipline to me. Yeah. But older now, it feels like it's a ritual. What's in the ritual? Mm-hmm. And if you look at what Jesus is talking to about the Pharisees and stuff like that, that you guys know the law backwards and you know, you, you do all your investigations as to who breaks the Sabbath and who doesn't break the Sabbath. But... You're not looking at the heart. You're not actually, you're not, so you're not, you're not mature yet. You think you're mature because you know all of this stuff, but Mm. you're not searching the Bible and reading the word and interpreting the word in Mm. the right way, in the way that Jesus basically kind of teaches us to do. So that kind of maturity comes afterwards. You stop looking at what's around. I know a lot of people that lost their faith because Pastor Soso did this. Or I went to this church and Pastor Soso did that. And they're looking at men. They're looking at what men are doing, and what other Christians, air mm. quotes, are doing, rather than the word. Look at mm. Jesus. Mm. Think about the greatest kings you can think of and think about how they died and what happened to them. They're human beings. 
I mean, David was one of the best, big, biggest kings in the world, and Solomon was the wisest, or the richest. We and they, so they, uh, at least Solomon didn't die, uh, didn't didn't have a happy ending, mm. you know, because he's a man. So we can't really look at men. We've got to look at the word, look at God, look at Jesus. But yeah. Mm, I agree with you when it comes to maturity. It is maturity, but then it's also like spiritual maturity. And that's why I like to say, like, even with what Rianne said, I totally agree with because, um, and what you said too, um, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. Jesus didn't come down onto the earth promoting a religion. He didn't come down, follow my religion. Da, da, da. He said, follow me. Like, because that's how a relationship starts. Like, that's how you end up making your friendship because you end up not following them in terms of like conformity, but following them in terms of like, right, like someone has something in common with me or like we can vibe on something, we can talk about something. So it's, it's definitely, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And then that's when you can grow in your spiritual maturity, sorry. And yeah, the word of God, oof, I'm going to say, guys, get into the word of God. It will take you places, like, it will really open up your mind and your thoughts. Like, I'm not going to get too much into it. I think maybe I said this to Rian one day when we were having our chat. And it even shows how um, Islam came along in Genesis. Like, so it's like, as long as you go into the word of God, you show that you're really, you're ready to surrender time. God will be like, okay, child, I will open your mind up to things. And then that's when that spiritual maturity comes because you were willing to surrender something, which would be your time. It's really... It's, it's really something, yeah, to be I was, honest. I'm going to ask as well, what would you... Because um, I think that's one of the questions you ask each other individually in terms of, like, what's your relationship? Yeah. With, or how you describe it? And I think the question was, what is your relationship with Jesus? But I'm going to ask, well, what's, how would you describe your relationship with God? We call God our Father. So how would you say your relationship is with Him? And how would you seek to improve that? Okay, we're going to take a break here and pick this up in the next episode. 15 minutes is long enough to task your attention span, but I hope you're finding the conversation as interesting as I did when we recorded this. So listen to the next episode and find out their answers to that question and others.